Nature's poisons, here collected. Water, earth, and air, infected. Oh, what a pity, such a city, was in such a place erected. Philip Frenot. During the 1790s, as yellow fever visited Philadelphia nearly every summer, a debate over its cause raged on. They weren't quite sure how diseases were being transferred. They thought that it was bad air. Some observers blame importation. They believed that yellow fever was brought to Philadelphia by Haitian refugees fleeing political unrest. When you get to the city, you're coming to the filthiest and smelliest place you'd seen in your life. No matter which theory stirred one's passion, there was consensus on one point. If Philadelphia wanted to survive, it would have to clean up. At the time of the 1793 outbreak, authority for protecting the health of Philadelphia was divided among a number of agencies. Many came to believe that it was the dilution of authority among these different agencies that had resulted in the weakness of Philadelphia's response. In 1795, the city established a board of public health, the first entity of its kind in the nation. The development of the Board of Public Health reflects the fear that somehow we brought this down upon ourselves, not by our bad moral character, not because God is smiting us, but because we've been careless and filthy, and that those things that are preventable ought to be prevented. Now, municipal employees would patrol the streets of Philadelphia, carrying leather buckets filled with water, cleaning the streets, and washing away refuse. So-called tight carts roamed the city as well, picking up animal remains and rotting debris, and creating the appearance of control in the chaotic urban environment. The Board of Health saw its responsibilities as twofold. To prevent diseases from entering the city from the outside, and to clean up the city to prevent the generation of disease within the city. The city's fast expanding port had been addressing the question of public health for decades, dating back to the construction of a lazaretto or quarantine hospital in 1740 to inspect incoming vessels and care for sick passengers before their illnesses could infect Philadelphians. The General Assembly purchased 360 acres around Fort Mifflin, where Gerard Point Bridge is right now. So they were going to build their lazaretto there, and lazaretto would be a marine hospital taking in people coming by ship, uh, rather than like the city hospital, which would take care of uh, citizens within the city. Repeated yellow fever epidemics would motivate city officials to take further action to safeguard the port. In 1799, the Board of Health built a new lazaretto, a new quarantine station, bigger, state-of-the-art, with ample hospital facilities, and most important of all, farther away from the city so that it would be easier to limit access to and from the quarantine station. The ships would come there and would take people off and, they, and the people would be cared for there. They worked very hard to heal them. They would then make them part of America. Because there is a Board of Public Health, because there is a public health policy, there is a thoughtful response. Instead of marching down to the docks with torches aflame and murdering people as they try to get off the ships, Instead, there's a quarantine, there's an institution built to protect the city from people that it fears. The cause of thoughtful medical action 
would inspire a group of 24 doctors to create the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. Their stated mission? To advance the science of medicine and to lessen human misery. At the height of the yellow fever epidemics, the college would offer a set of guidelines to calm the city. Upon somebody's death, the custom was, of course, to ring the church bells to mourn the passing of one's fellow citizen. In time of epidemic, you can imagine just the effect of the constant non-stop ringing of church bells. It just fueled the sense of despair. The College of Physicians says, stop ringing the church bells. It's contributing to the general demoralization of the population. The College of Physicians is taking a position, we've got this under control, everybody remain calm. Institutions like the Board of Health and the College of Physicians would make public health an integral part of Philadelphia's civic identity. This explosion of civic institutions. Ideas can get a foothold here. They can be tried, they can be tested, they can be discarded. It becomes the research and development lab for the nation.